this downtime has given us a chance to reflect on some classics and some personal memories. And during this time, in 2004, you were in Japan. It was your first year with the Yankees. What a series that was. So many memories. We're going to start there. What is the first thing that jumps out to you when you think of March 30th, 2004? You know, Nancy, it was an exciting time because, uh, you know, obviously to open the major league season in Japan, uh, we were all excited about that. I'd never been to Japan, so I was looking forward to, uh, to checking out their culture. But I think for all of us, it was about Hideki Matsui, you know, going back home. And we saw the year before how big of a star he is in the United States because of the way that he played and the talent that he had. But we were all very curious about going back to his home country and to see what uh, Godzilla was all about back home. So it was pretty exciting. And who could forget when he hit that home run, the Tokyo Dome was rocking. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, the, the thing with, with Hideki is we would see him deal with the Japanese media every day in 2003. But he was such a low profile guy that he didn't really crave attention, want attention, but it just came his way. But when we got to Japan, it was like a rock star had gotten off of that plane. And we almost, I think all of us took a step back and said, how is this gonna go for the next couple of days? Because there are so many expectations on him, not only on the field to do the job, but also behind the scenes with all the fans and the media and all the fanfare. And like you mentioned, he hits that home run uh, he had a great couple of days when the spotlight was all about him. So I guess it was really nothing new, right? Hideki was one of those guys that always stepped up and rose to the occasion, and he did on that entire trip. You know, you've said many times he's one of your favorite all-time teammates. He was so great with us. I loved talking to him. He didn't like to speak English on camera, but right. he was fun to hang around with off camera. Yeah, and I, I always say this, I always thought, Nancy, that he was probably Joe Torre's perfect player, right? Because he played yeah. great defense in left field. He hit in the middle of the lineup. He drove in 100 runs, it seemed like, every year. And there was no fanfare about him. There was no drama. He showed up every day. Uh, he dealt with what he had to deal with, and he went out there and produced. And, you know, it's funny when I moved on and kind of got into the broadcasting business, and you talk to some people with the Boston Red Sox, they would say that Hideki Matsui was their most feared hitter in our lineup because they felt like they could pitch to some other guys in some big spots. But Hideki was, was at his best when there were runners on base. So perfect teammate, um, great man, great father, all those things that you can't say enough about. Let's touch on some other memories from that time. And I particularly remember Mike Mussina dreading going on that trip. That was oh, yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, Mike uh, wasn't in a good mood. Uh, I think Mike probably saw uh, in his vision what we were going to have to go through, which I was totally naive to. I just was thinking, all right, I'm going to Japan. Uh, I was really interested to see the Japanese style of baseball. We were able to play two exhibition games uh, against a couple of those teams. and. Yeah. I actually hit a home run in one of those games against one of the Japanese team, which was a big thrill for me. Nice but, luck. <laughs> yeah, it was, I got lucky, Nancy. I got lucky a few <laughs> times. But uh, the thing about Moose is he knew how much travel it was going to take. He knew the time change and the jet lag. And that's what really stayed with me. The trip was great. But when we came back, it was about three weeks. And you're playing regular season games that, that are meaningful. It took about three weeks to get back to feeling normal uh, with all of the time changes that were going on. So uh, Moose was ahead of the curve on that one, for sure. <laughs> How much going in did you know about the Japanese style of play? Not a whole lot. Uh, yeah. I knew that uh, they did things a little bit differently over there, like taking batting practice was different. They actually had two different cages going. Um, I was intrigued, and you know this, we talk on the batting practice show all the time about mechanics and different things. I was intrigued on how in tune the Japanese players were with their mechanics at the plate and pitching, right? Because they, they're physically not as strong, so they mechanically have to be perfect. So I was 
intrigued by watching the, the two days when we played against Japanese teams. It was a lot of fun for me. A couple other points I remember from that trip as well. This was A-Rod's first year. These oh, were wow, his first that, games yeah. with the Yankees. Yes, and you know, I, I think in a weird way, spring training was all about Alex, right? He was coming over and all of the attention and trying to, to make his way into our clubhouse. And then when we went to Japan, it was all about Hideki. So some of the heat was kind of taken off of Alex. And um, I think that might have been a game, wasn't it, where Alex and Paul Quantrell had a little collision down the third base line. And Paul Quantrell actually hurt his knee uh, on opening day, I think it was, and struggled the rest of the way with it. So, uh, yeah, there was a lot going on, Nancy. You're bringing up a lot of great memories with going on this trip. And Alex Rodriguez, his first year, uh, it, was a, it was sometimes a traveling circus, to be sure. I remember those days very, very well. And also, just a, a word on the atmosphere. Was it out of this world? Was it different than being here on home soil? Well, it was different in the fact that the Japanese fans cheer a little bit differently. You know, there are chants constantly through the game and cheers through the game. So we weren't quite used to that, but it was so loud. And, and they were really, really going crazy for Hideki. So I think it was an opportunity for all of us in a weird way to just kind of take a step back and take a back seat and, and make it be all about Hideki, let him do his thing and let the Japanese fans have their time, which they certainly did. Well, John, speaking of memories, uh, you've done a lot of that today. You were live tweeting this morning. Yeah, it was fun. I was asked to live tweet about Game 7, the Aaron Boone game, when he hit the home run in 2003. It brought back a lot of great memories at the end. It was the first time that I ever went to a World Series, and it turned out to be the only time on, on Aaron's swing. So there are a lot of memories that come flooding back to you about that. But also some of the peaks and valleys during the game. I was reminded of watching and live tweeting. You know, you get down early for nothing and a lot of negative thoughts are going through your mind and, and it was just an incredible game. So a lot of fun interacting with some of the fans on Twitter this morning and hopefully you get a chance to do it again. Well, scrolling through some of your tweets, who did have a great game was Mariano, unbelievable. But you said you thought Mo was hurt. I did. It was kind of a strange mix of emotions because Mariano threw three innings, obviously, and I was in the bullpen and I was warming up Jose Contreras, who had nothing in the bullpen. And I remember thinking to myself, we're in trouble because Wakefield is in this game. Obviously, with the knuckleball, he can throw a lot of innings and Contreras had nothing. So I was kind of down, to be honest with you. I was kind of thinking this isn't going to work out real well. And then the next thing you know, Aaron has the swing hits the home run. And from my perspective in the bullpen, I knew it was going to be deep enough. I didn't know it was going to be fair or foul. And it was confirmed to me that it was fair when I saw the crowd standing up and cheering. And at that point, I did a dead sprint into the, <laughs> into the celebration, probably the fastest I had ever run in my life. And I saw Mariano on the mound like he was hurt. And I thought maybe he hurt a knee in the celebration, but it turned out he was weeping on the pitcher's mound. But from my perspective, running in from the bullpen, I had no idea about that. So, so many different things. And then you realize he's okay and the celebration was on. And one of the greatest nights in my baseball life, not only celebrating out on the field, but then that celebration goes in the clubhouse. And there are some memories in there that you just never forget. Flash, thanks so much. Our time is done. So great to visit with you. I uh, look forward to the next time. Hopefully it will be in person, but even if virtually, it's going to be great. I love seeing you. Stay safe. You too, Nancy. Stay safe up there, and I look forward to it when we can do this in uh, person.